Okay, cool. We're here today with Mackenzie Dern. Yeah. <laughs> she's more, uh, I know for many of you, like she's an idol, an icon of our sport. But for me, she's more like a young sister. We met each other in 2011, right? Yeah, on the camp for the world. <laughs> yes, Mackenzie was a purple belt back then. Beating she's, each other up. Yeah, <laughs> uh -huh. by the way, we always took it like very easy and uh, our, friend, our friendship got stronger like through the years, right? Yeah. Now she's my daughter's godmom. Uh-huh. Yeah. And she was there when my daughter was born and we've been through so much together. So all my camps is with yeah. her, you know, like far if it's by far or close, you know, always like sending her message, what do you think? How you what's your opinion? You know, so we always connect all the time. It's really cool, good cool. what did you two brought And us. by the way, we're speaking English with Brazilian accent. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> okay, so like we're doing, we just finished training here at Atos HQ. Um, Mackenzie is getting ready for her next match at UFC. Mm. When is it again? December 12th. Okay, December cool, 12th cool, cool. in Vegas. Ooh, yeah, I'm excited. It's <laughs> yeah, it's good to see that like even Jiu Jitsu, Jiu Jitsu world champions still like sharpening their, their, their best, right? <laughs> yeah, I think like that's a lot of the things what they do is like the fighters, they try to, um, you know, always train with their what their weaknesses, you know, and of course I'm always training, you see like on the train I get beat up all the time, you know, I'm always trying like yeah. my positions that I need to get better on, um, and even though like jiu-jitsu is my, my strength, yeah, you know, it's yeah. like so much training, MMA, MMA striking and wrestling and the cage, mm -hmm. all these things, I can't forget to, to go back to my roots, you know, mm -hmm. and especially since I'm not competing anymore, um, as much, you know, and maybe yeah, one day I'll yeah. do some super fight or something, yeah. you know, but uh, since I'm not competing, I think the competition is what keeps your level so high. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the girls that fight me, they're just training jiu-jitsu, just training defense, jiu-jitsu, uh, defense to the yes. go to the ground. So uh, I need to come here and get my butt kicked yeah. to make sure I'm prepared for my jiu-jitsu yeah. game on the UFC. Yeah, we're excited. Mm -hmm. um, but today we want to talk uh, about something that is actually like something of my own interest as well. Um, if you don't know, Mackenzie started Jiu Jitsu when you were yeah, three. Three, mm -hmm. yes. It was not a choice. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> no, like just, oh, take to the academy. You know, my dad had academy like you and Andre since I'm little. Um, and just letting, start by like letting you run around and play, kind of play like takedowns and mm -hmm. break falls and. Uh, mount, hip escape, those fun things. It was always more like uh, playing around. Yeah, that's how getting the, serious. Yeah, yeah. And my yeah. first competition was five years old, and I lost my first competition. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was like not so serious. Like was serious. I was so sad. I cried and everything. But um, was just kind of like, okay, I see my dad compete all the time, so I'm gonna do the same thing. You know, I didn't really understand like how serious it is. Like now, I think it's yeah, a little bit yeah. the kids thinking to be like sponsors uh -huh. and all these things, you know? Yes, like <laughs> definitely the, the the kids community in Jiu Jitsu right now is just yeah. like in another level. Yeah. But things never change because kids, kids are still kids, you know? Like you have out of Jiu Jitsu in your childhood, you had another, um, um, another activity. Yeah, I, I always did like sports and I always liked to dance. I did a lot of mm -hmm. dance, I did a, Basketball, volleyball, softball. Mm -hmm. Like did you go to school, regular the, school. Yeah, I went to regular school, um, and I could do any sports, you know, like just as long as I did jujitsu too, you know. So if, as long as like usually the work, the practice was right after school, and then the kids' classes later in the night, mm -hmm. you know, maybe six p.m. or something. Mm -hmm. So I always did both. Just in high school that I started around like fourteen years old that I started to like take more serious. Then I start to miss more school, you know, but always like bringing my medals to school, you know, always uh, getting the permission from the teachers, nice, you know, before nice. cool, they give cool. me like the homework beforehand, you know, mm -hmm. so I finish everything. So it was good. I, I graduated one year early um, to go to Brazil and mm -hmm. to be training there and take more like serious the sport. But from five years old to 14 was like very, very normal, normal yeah. childhood, you know, just kicking butt at the same time. Nice, <laughs> nice. Cool. Yeah, but my question like today is more like in the other side because I'm a parent. Mm -hmm. I own this school together with Andre. And Andre is immensely one of the most successful um, athletes in our in our sport. And we have our daughter that mm -hmm. is right now like is, she's enjoying so much doing jiu-jitsu, you know. Mm -hmm. We never put like any pressure. In fact, she's just in the last two years that's when she started like, oh, I really want to train, I really want to compete. And it was fine if she didn't want to, you mm -hmm. know, but now she does. And I can only see my side 
of the picture mm -hmm. being as a parent and mm -hmm. sometimes being as a coach because she's in my class yeah. um, most of the times and she's under Andrea's eyes most of the time uh, we see our part it's hard to split being a parent and yeah. being a coach at the same time we want to be neutral we want to be um, impartial we want to make sure you don't put too much pressure but you also like push her you want to push I want to push her as a coach but I don't want to pressure her as a parent yeah mm -hmm. and sometimes it, it can be very difficult yeah but you today yeah. you like you were a kid on the mat yeah. your parent your dad was like your coach and yeah. your dad all uh -huh. the time so you yeah. had him like eyes on you 24 7 yeah. like your trips international trips all all of them with him mm -hmm. on your corner uh, he's still in your corner yeah. right <laughs> these days yeah um and today you're a grown-up woman very successful in what you do uh you try like gi no gi mm -hmm. now you're near in the mma and you became a parent yeah. you were a mom right now mm -hmm. um your <laughs> husband is also a competitor yeah. right in surf and you have a daughter yeah what what are the lessons that you take today in a reflection? Not saying that your dad did something wrong, mm -hmm. because as a parent we we wrong with our kids, but <laughs> yeah. like it's always like with the good intention. Yeah. But what uh, are the lessons today? What are the things today that when you reflect, how do you feel as a kid having your parent watching you all the time and? When was it too much pressure? When was the more encouragement? Yeah, I think the I think most of the pressure never came from my dad. You know, oh, uh -huh. my dad was very good at not putting pressure. You know, and it's the same thing I think today. Like, man, I hope not to put the pressure. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I'm already thinking like how I'm gonna do it when my daughter starts to go already. Like Moa, she she likes to do like striking a lot of time, uh -huh, punch, uh -huh, punch. You know, uh -huh. and for me, I feel a little bit like. Like, I'm glad that she likes sports, you know, but I'm feeling like, man, I hope she likes more jiu-jitsu first mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I think I think it's it's important, you know, to learn jiu-jitsu be the basic the foundation, and yeah, yeah, the foundation and then the striking and the other things can come later, you know, so I hope she like, and so I'm already starting to feel like, man, I'm going to start to like push her a little bit towards more jiu-jitsu, but not pressure, you know, and I think the most pressure I had growing up was from like the media, you know, I that see. I know for sure that a lot of the kids especially if they have like very well-known parents you know mm -hmm. the pressure comes from outside you yeah. know then actually the home you know so it's like i go to the tournament and i always put the pressure myself like i hope to make my dad proud you know or i hope I mean, all the media everyone's looking at me everyone wants to see the fights you know but my dad was always like very very relaxed very like never push me you know never said you have to go to training anything like that you know always like respect me you know and mm -hmm. i think that was the most the best thing he could do, you know, was respect like my my decisions and always always open like, oh, I'm I'm not feeling good, um, oh, I'm I'm feeling like my knee or something, you know, and he's okay, like rest. But um, so I think that's the best thing. And also too, he always trained me like like one of the guys, you know. Uh -huh. He never went easy on me, you know. And I think that's the uh, best that's thing. A, that's a lesson I need to <laughs> I need to learn. It's hard, you know. I think it's so hard. And even like today, I'm training with. Sarah, you know, that I've known since she's so little, you know, and I kind of felt like the same situation as her, you know, and it was, I felt so like, like easy to make her like, um, like one more training, you know, like uh, just like, yes. you know, because I felt me in her situation, uh -huh. you know, yes. and I felt so easy to be like, okay, we're pushing each other and we're gonna try to kill yeah. each other and da, 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 you mm -hmm. know, and I think that's what they, we feed off each other, you know, and that's, that's the, the very line that you need to know is like to, Push and be hard, you know, mm -hmm, a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I don't know how I'll be. I don't want my daughter to do like MMA, you know, yeah. <laughs> to see her get punched in the face, you know. It's but hard. I'm gonna support, you know, no matter what she does, you know. I'm gonna say, oh baby, like be careful, you know, train hard, you know, so it doesn't get hurt. And it's funny, like my dad was my coach my whole mm -hmm. life, and when I went to MMA, my first fight, you know, he didn't come. He wasn't in my corner, you know. And it was for both reasons. Like one, he kind of like. Was, I think it was hard for him to watch me get uh -huh. punched in the face and everything live and everything like that. And two, I wanted to like really enjoy my dad as a relationship with my dad, you know, I and see. not my coach, mm -hmm. you know. So I said like, I, I don't know, I saw like a lot of things like Floyd Mayweather and his dad, a lot of yes. big athletes with their fathers and they end up like, 
you know, I don't know, five years without talking, you know, I think it's a lot of stress yeah. and money and, and training and impression, all these things, you know. I said that, like, now I'm going on to a new thing, you know, you, like train my jiu-jitsu with you, but let me enjoy, like, this relationship now as a father and yeah. daughter and to keep, and to keep that, you know, I think the only thing that's bad is that you can lose that easy, you know, mm -hmm. with having a coach, you know, sometimes you feel like, as a kid, you know, sometimes you feel like, um, you know, you don't have like a father, you know, you have more of a coach all the time, you know what yes. I mean? So I, I really like, am happy I was able to get the first couple fights in the UFC and MMA and stuff like that uh, with my dad kind of on the, always supporting me, you know, but not, not right there, you know, not as my coach. And after a couple of fights, when, and he started to see like how, how I'm doing mm -hmm. in MMA, you know, like, okay, she's doing good, you know, she's doing mm -hmm. Jiu-Jitsu, you know, she's representing and everything. Then I feel more comfortable, like, okay, that you can go with me because, you know, before I had problems to make weight in the yeah. MMA, you know, and I had these things and sometimes you need someone who can, put, like we're talking, you know, like yeah. someone who will keep pushing you to your limits, you know, and I said like, okay, or my dad is like, I'm in the sauna, or he's gonna say, no, no, you're good, you can come out, yeah, you know, it's hard for a you know, to see, to your kid, see yourself, you know, you know, breaking down. Yeah, and so I think like, I need someone that likes me, wants the best for me, but doesn't have like emotions evolved. Yes. You know, involved in the in the situation. So I think it's a it's a mix, you know, the most is like to not get the emotions involved too much and to be to be tough, you know. I think that's what helps me fight, you know, Gabby Garcia who are you know, all these ob obstacles, you know, because I've seen it all with my dad, you know. And um yeah and 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 the heart, and the best part is like, you know, to have to have someone that's a big role model for you all the time you know you see like you know they wake up early they you know you, you know your life they wake up early they go train they eat healthy they you know be a good person you know helping the other people yes. teaching you know the whole process so I think that's the best part about having a father or mother mm -hmm. as a coach and all these things so I hope I can do that with more yes <laughs> that would be super exciting yeah. yes but as you just say that like we learn a lot by watching an example, right? It's mm -hmm. just like in this interview, I think was more um, productive than yeah. having you teaching a position or something <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh -huh. like in Jiu Jitsu, which like you do really well. Mm -hmm. But um, I learn a lot right now, mm -hmm. and I'm sure like someone right there behind the camera, uh, on the phone, on the computer is like yeah. learning a lot. All the parents out there. Um, it's beautiful, it's hard to find a balance yeah. Like for me, it's hard sometimes to find a balance between um, mom and coach, especially yeah. because right now she wants to sleep with me. So it's always like fishing. <laughs> but uh, yes, and when was the switch? And how did you feel when you became from um, being um, Megaton's daughter to Mackenzie Dern? To Mackenzie Dern. <laughs> uh -huh. like, yeah, I think it was more. I uh, like black belt. You, you still know? like Megaton? Yeah. Like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. The, the connection is just like nobody, yeah. nobody can think of like you guys without one another. You know? yeah. we cannot see, we cannot think of Megaton yeah. without thinking of Mackenzie. You, you will, n will never think of Mackenzie without uh -huh. Mega. Yeah. But uh, I, I wasn't. Th I think more on the black belt. You know, brown belt was starting to get like, oh, Mackenzie. You no, know, Mackenzie's coming to the black belt. She's gonna be here soon. You know, and all these things. But once I got to the black belt, then people start to see me like in my own, my own light, my own name, and things like that. You know, and it was good. You know, I, I felt like the pressure. You know, of course, mm -hmm. I start to lose a little bit my first year black belt. You know, you get like start to get a different type of experience. You know, um, but it was good to, to kind of get the pressure off. You know, like I said, from the media and all these things and. Kind of the pressure, I not, okay, I don't need to represent my dad, you know, always I need to represent my dad, of course, you know, um, but, you know, I don't need to think about, oh, he's gonna be, he's not gonna like how I did, or these things, you know, people start to put the more pressure on me, you know, and when they pressure on me, I feel like way more comfortable, you know, like, okay, if they talk bad about me, it's okay, but I don't want them to talk about how my dad's teaching or coaching, yeah. all these things, you know, and so definitely on the black belt was mm -hmm. like, they switch, you know, they start to say, oh, you're Mackenzie's dad, you know, yeah. <laughs> to my dad, uh -huh. Mackenzie's uh, father. <laughs> also, like another thing that, like, you have always been someone that always thought that everything was possible, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, you like during our friendship, I I could notice that like you were growing maturity, but you always had that like that 
childish like dreaming <laughs> thing in yeah. you and you're uh, still having uh, it right <laughs> i remember one day we went to um to a park and it was like all sand by the beach and then we were doing like um, pull-ups pull and everything <laughs> and then I put my wedding ring um, on top of like some something right there and uh, we drove back home and then on the way back home I was like oh no I forgot my wedding ring and I was like by that by now someone took it already and then she says no no we have to come back we have to come back we'll find it we came back the wedding was no longer there and <laughs> we just she was, and then I was like okay let's go home like uh -huh. that's it and she said no we have to to stick for it on it's the sand. So, <laughs> so we started like going through the sand. It was like, my kids, you're crazy. Let's go home and let guess what? We found it. We found it. Yeah. Okay. So, like, it, with the same persistence, my kids was always like that. She never thought that she was uh, too small for open weight. She never thought that she wasn't like, she never thought that she was like much better than everyone. That she never is not, is not that um, mindset. But she never thought less of herself. Never, um, but he also went through a very uh, serious surgery, um, knee injury, mm -hmm. and then he went through a surgery uh, in the beginning of your black dog, yeah, black dog career. Mm -hmm. um, many people don't ever come back after that mm -hmm. type of injury. Uh, like, how do you keep yourself motivated? I remember when you came back and like you were fighting like after a few months, <laughs> but you definitely were not like performing like you're yeah. 100% and you knew it but you kept like doing it um how did you um how did you work with your mindset like on coming back and uh doing it even though you weren't feel good and yeah it, it just like it's again like like you said it was my first year on black belt that mm -hmm. I got my knee injury and like I was invited to the ADCC so I had to pull out the ADCC um and like I said, so many people like, oh, it's her first year black belt, she's gonna do so good, There's you know? There's so much expectation, yes, right? Yes, exactly, you know? I was like the first uh, world champion brown belt because it was the first year they split, you know, absolute. So I was the first double woman's gold. absolute, yeah, double gold, you know, on the women's division. And so it's like a lot of, okay, the absolute champion brown belt, men and women, usually, you know, they, they say like, okay, they're gonna do good on the black belt. And I had the injury and, and I came back to fight four months and I think just thinking like more ahead, you know, I, w I always thought like, okay, I'm gonna come back a little bit early. Not really, I was always like okayed by the clear by the mm -hmm. doctor. I never did anything like I couldn't do. But I'm gonna come back early on the Pan Ams because the time to come back will be technically six months will be the world championships, you know? And I think it's so much like a mind game, you know? The Jiu Jitsu to be like a mental game competition, you know, and it to be good in the mind. You can do, I've done so many camps, right? You've been, yeah. She's seen me do camps like I've trained so good and then I lose the first round and do camps that I'm training a lot but maybe I'm getting so beat up and then I go and I win everything, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just everything to do with your mind. Yeah. So um, I thought like, okay, I don't want to be my first tournament back, the world championship, like after my knee surgery, maybe I'm going to be like nervous about some positions and things like that. So I almost I prefer to like, if I'm going to lose, lose early on the Pan Ams, a smaller yeah, tournament, yeah. and then I can see, feel like more comfortable. And that's why I did like, I get like second and third, you know, doing good on the podium, but just thinking like, okay, but in the head, it's good. It's going to come, you know, you mm -hmm. can't stop, be yeah. persistent, persistent. Um, and keep thinking like I had nothing is just like today or tomorrow you know it's you need to think like the long run the long run yeah sure. exactly you know so because I, definitely a, a career in Jiu Jitsu or any other sport is not like a, a short a short race yeah right? like, you mm -hmm. know, it's a very long race yeah it's and that's a big thing like you see different MMA from Jiu Jitsu you know Jiu Jitsu is a long career you know like you you win a lot you know you can lose a lot and back and forth one month you can fight the same person like five times mm -hmm. you know depending weight absolutely with absolute. different results yeah, yeah. Uh, with different results and then it the makes like opponent. very fast you know you need to get to the title you know and and finish undefeated you know like yeah. in the, the memory of the fans and stuff in the in mm -hmm. MMA it's very short you know in Jiu Jitsu you're constantly you know constantly testing yourself and constantly you need to to cor correct what you what you did you know so always in the fights and you know, I saw like Okay, I, I watch like you fight someone and I say, okay, Angelica, she did good when she held the arm, you know, when she held the sleeve. She, I saw that like that was good with Bia, you know, for example. So when I fight Bia, I'm gonna try that position that Angelica. Maybe I never did it, you know, but I'm trying uh -huh. something. I see. Yes. That, so I always try to be like 
the best Mackenzie, but I think Mackenzie is like a little bit of Angelica, a little bit of Andrea, a little bit of Megata, a little bit of, I don't know, uh, Leo Vieira, a little bit of uh, Gizari, a little bit of, you know, all these people I'm trying to take something yeah. and be the best fighter mm -hmm. you can be, you know, so it's like my whole life I trained my dad, but I always come to Atos, you know, and train here with her, you know, mm -hmm. and Angelica and Andrea and, and learn different types and different styles because you need to be the best all, yeah. all around, you know? <laughs> so non-stop growing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, like, thank you so much. Thank I'm gonna you. let you go. We still have a sparring today, huh? Yes, okay. one more. <laughs> okay. So, so I much. hope you guys enjoy. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was it. Thank you.